So last week's video on setting up your Discord may have gotten a little long. So this week, we're gonna keep it brief. We're gonna be doing your Discord server this time. What's up everyone, it's Dimitri from the Cata Gaming Channel. And this week, we're gonna be going over how to set up your Discord server. And this one is just gonna be simple setup, um, how to get your Discord server started and going through the initial process. And then next week, we'll be going over some more advanced things and I'll talk about those closer to the end of the video. Don't forget, if you have any questions or you just wanna to talk to me, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday, come check me out. Link in the video description below. And uh, let's just hop right into this. All right, so setting up a server on Discord is pretty, pretty easy. Um, unlike older services like Ventrilo and stuff, you can set up a server for free and you can set up as many of them as you want. So let's go ahead and set up a new one. Um, so we're gonna do all this on desktop today. And then if you guys do have any questions about doing it on mobile, for example, or any of the things that I do today, how you would do them on mobile, just leave a comment in the section below. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll get to them as quick as I can. But most of the stuff is very, very similar with only a few things differing between the desktop and mobile versions. So if you wanna start your own server, you go ahead over here to the add a server button. And you can you know, start from templates if you guys want. Um, I normally just go and create my own. And we're gonna call this, we're gonna call this my test server. And you can upload an image if you'd like. We're not gonna do that right now, but we're gonna go ahead and upload an image. And here you go. So when you start a server, this is what you get. You get one text channel, you get one voice channel, and they are separated in categories of text channels and voice channels. So if you wanna go ahead and add another text channel, you can do that by doing create channel, another text channel, and there you go. If you wanna do another voice channel, you can do that, voice channel, and there you go. And these aren't actually limiting you to putting a text channel in here, right? Um, these are just categories and you can rename these by right clicking on them, doing edit category, and you can change the name of that category. You can also add a new category by just right clicking and creating a new category. Now, um, if we go into the settings here, there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of edit. So one of the first things would be server region. I think Discord by default selects the closest region to wherever you're currently located at. Um, so that's not a bad idea. Setting up an inactive channel is really nice if you have people who go AFK in voice channels often. Um, you can set an inactive channel and it'll send them to it uh, when they've been inactive for a certain period of time. Um, and you can choose that limit and it'll just throw them elsewhere. So if you have a lot of channels where there's a limited number of people that are allowed to be in the channel at once, you can choose to kick people if they haven't been active on Discord for a certain period of time. Um, system messages are these two things here. So if someone boosts or someone joins, it'll give a little welcome message. For example, let's go over to Alyssa's server. And when someone joins, it'll do this little welcome message here, for example, and it'll randomize it. So if you want those, uh, it's a good idea. What I normally suggest you do though, is have a welcome um, channel separated from everything else so that it doesn't fill up your general, especially if you have a lot of people joining often. Um, and the default notification settings are important. So if you're just gonna have a small server with your friends, leave it on all messages, not a big deal. But if you plan on having a public Discord where a lot of people will be joining, I highly suggest you put this on only mentions so that people aren't spammed with notifications because then they're gonna mute the server and then activity in your server is going to drop because people aren't really paying attention to what's going on. Roles are very important. So what roles do is it allows you to give permissions to certain groups of people and not to others. Um, so if you're streaming, I highly suggest you create like a stream chatting role that allows them to join your stream chatting channel 
that can only be joined by people that you give that role to. So if you have a lot of random people in your server or people that you may want not want to hop on to your, um, your stream via voice, you can only give this to certain people. So if we go into my server here and we click on someone's name, you can see all of their roles here. And one of them I have is called Stream Chatters. What that does is it allows people to join my Stream Chat channel. So when I go into edit this channel, you can see the permissions only the um, stream chatters have access to connect to it while as everybody else um, does not. And then this is my role, Bacon Boy. Um, so everybody does not have access, only people that I give the stream chatters role to get to access this channel so that I can kind of control who can come into the channel while I'm streaming. Um, and then people can join this one and I can pull them up if they don't currently have the role, which is really simple. So roles are a really good way to control, um, what people can do in your chat in your server and where they can do it. We'll go over roles a little bit more in depth on the next video where I'm going to go over roles and bots. Um, but roles are a really good thing for you to look into and you can also just use roles to give people custom colors. So if you noticed here, um, if you go and add a role, you can choose colors for them. So you can call this one blue and then blue and save the changes. And now if I right click on myself and I give myself the blue, now my name's blue. So if you're, if you're just a server of your friends and you don't really care about controlling where people are able to do things, you can just create roles just to give people colors. If everybody wants their own color, it's really easy. And that, um, that setting there allows you to uh, do like lots of colors. You can do all the custom colors. So everybody can literally have their own color, even though a lot of them will look similar and such a small factor, uh, like a small font and stuff, but that's also a really good thing. All right, so if we wanna go back to channels and categories with the knowledge of how roles work, you can actually um, control an entire category by roles and permissions, or you can do it on a channel by channel basis. So to do it on a category, you right click edit category permissions, and now you can control the, everything that's inside of that category with one um, list. Um, it's really annoying if you're going to go and add permissions for certain things um, across multiple channels, because you have to do it every single time. You can't really copy and paste. So this is a really good way to do that where you can do it by the category instead and you only have to do it once. If you want to do it on a channel, however, you go to edit and now you get a few more options. So you can change the name of the channel. You can change how many people are allowed in there at once. So if you have like, for example, a team based game, only five people are on a team at a time. You can limit a channel made specifically for that game to have only five people. Uh, for the case of Among Us, you would limit it at 10, for example. And then you don't have to really worry about random people hopping in and out and kind of disrupting or doing stuff like that. Um, you can also change the bitrate, but I highly suggest you just leave it at the default. Um, people on poor connections, it mentions here, people on poor connections will have a harder time on higher bit rates and lower bit rates will just lower in quality. So staying at 64 is usually a pretty good spot. Now, if you go and edit a text channel, however, you get a little, you get few more different options. So now you can actually give a small description on what the channel does. Um, you can turn on slow mode so that people can only post so often. Um, this is really good in like a general chat. If you, again, if you have a lot of people in your server and there's, there's that one person that like posts one small, like, two words and then three words and then two words and like each of a message and they just fill up the chat and you don't want that to happen you can use slow mode to reduce that you can also mark a text channel as not safe for work so that people have to go and say yes i agree to open up the not safe for work good idea to have one if you do plan on having any kind of not safe for work content in your server put it specifically in its own channel and mark it as not safe for work now, one little tip for the channels and the categories is actually to edit their names on your phone. Um, when you do that, you can actually add um, like emojis 
into the uh, the names of them. So if we go over to my server here, you can see we have all of the names and the categories kind of have some emojis on there and that allows you to kind of make them pop out and stick out a little bit more, especially. Um, and you can do it with roles as well. So if you can see here, um, I got the little nerd icon for myself. I have all the bot icons for the bots, a little siren for the admin and so on and so forth. So this is a really good thing to do on mobile. It's a lot easier to do emojis on mobile than it is on desktop. And it can really add a little bit of flair. Um, so if we go ahead and edit one, you can see you just go ahead and throw it into the title there. They will look different depending on what device you're on, um, but just try them out and see how they look. So another thing that a lot of people really enjoy about having their own server is that you can customize your emojis. So I have quite a few emojis that I've thrown in there um, and you have a maximum of 50 emojis that you can have in your own server unless you get boosted and then that number increases. And um, you know, emojis are really, are really fun. They can add a lot of character to your Discord. Some people will join Discords just to use emojis. Um, so feel free to have some creative expression. I'll leave a link in the video description below for a few websites that have uh, emojis already like pre-selected for Discord and they're really easy for you to download and then put onto your server. Um, and yeah, just have fun with it. Uh, make sure that you change the name because whenever you upload the name, it'll just choose the file name. So make sure you use a name that like actually makes sense for whatever the emoji is portraying moderation tab so because i have a community server it requires me to have at least low um as a moderation task here so um, members of the server have to have a verified email before they can send messages um you can you know go higher and you can see all these options here and how they they get more string stringent sorry on on the requirements needed to be able to participate in the server and we have it because again, we're on a community server. Um, I have it so it has to scan all media content from members. The audit log is something that just shows all of the actions that have happened within a server. So it doesn't show what um, people are doing such as joining or leaving the server, but it'll show what moderators and people with moderative abilities um, have done uh, within the server so you can kind of keep track so a lot of mine is like i've updated all the roles um my bot that i have that automatically gives people roles based on reactions um was giving roles to people uh, my friend nicholas was moving people into certain channels when they were playing a game together and so on and so forth so like this one is just a log to keep track of everything. You can filter by users and by action. So you can see update server, create channel, update channel, delete channel, and change permissions. So this one is just a really good one to kind of view what's going on. <clears throat> Integrations has recently gotten an upgrade. So you can actually manage all of your bots from within this and it'll open up the web page for you, which is really nice. And again, we'll be going over uh, bots in next week's video. Now, if you have a website, you can go ahead and add a widget for your Discord on the website and it'll show a little preview of your Discord. Um, I personally don't use it, but you can have it direct to a certain channel within your server. And, you know, it's really nice if you end up having use for it. Now, this is also very recent and having a server template is a really nice way to have everything already like basically preset up for you. Um, and pretty easy to go so you can see when you create a template it'll copy all these things but it won't copy these um, so i'm actually going to go ahead and create a template for my server and i will leave the link for it down below and if you guys want to use the template for my server in your own servers you can go ahead and do that now as i mentioned i have uh, made my server a community server and what that means is that um, it defaults a bunch of those settings like i mentioned earlier and it changes the default notification settings. So if you go to overview here, only at mentions is available. Like you shouldn't really change it to all mentions because it's a community server now. And now you can kind of direct, automatically direct people to certain areas of your, of your server when they join. Um, so my rules is here, my community updates are here. Um, and then the primary server language is there. With having a community server, 
You can also get insights. I'm not going to go ahead and open those right now. If you guys do want me to do a video on the server insights, please let me know uh, just in the comment section. And um, if enough people ask me to do it, I'll definitely consider it. Now, the partner program, unless you have a lot of members, and by a lot, I mean a de pretty decent amount. It's 500 people minimum. Um, then you can apply to be a partner and with a partner you get a whole bunch of branding things so you get some unique branding you get some partner only perks um, and you get recognized and you can get thrown onto the discovery tab which will then grow the community even further because it's made available to people when they go and just browse for servers as i mentioned here this is the discovery tab and for the discovery however you need 10,000 people minimum to be on there I know that sounds like a lot, but the big YouTubers and person like YouTube personalities and streaming personalities have way more than that. So once you get up to that size, you probably won't be watching my videos trying to find help, but this is a great way to do it. And uh, it's a really nice way to further grow that community even more. And if you do set up the community settings, you can set up a welcome screen and what it'll do is it'll say hey welcome to this certain server um if you want to learn the rules this is where you go if you want to give yourself roles if you want to say hello and join in and if you want to share some of your spiciest memes this is where you go so you set this up however you'd like and you can kind of give all these default channels so i chose these as like being the most important to someone who's just joining for the first time um, i'll probably add another one for let's say help desk if you're looking for help please post and we will do computer Bam. so now we get there we go and now if you're looking for help post here and it's the help desk so pretty easy. These are only applicable if you do set up your server as a community server. Now server boosts, I did go over in the last video, but this will show you um, where your s server is at the current moment with its boosting status. So I have one person who's boosted. So unfortunately you need two to get to level one. So we're not at level one yet, but once you get to each of the levels, you do get a bunch of benefits from that being emoji slots, um, audio quality, banners, and things like that. I do go over it a little more in depth in the previous video, um, but this is where you'll see the current status. If you do go into user management here for members, it'll just show you every member in, in the server and what roles they have, which is really nice. On the invites tab, it just shows all of the currently active um, invites, uh, links that are available. So. This is my never expiring invite, which is always a good one to have. Um, I have another one that is, has an expiry after 50 uses. And then it shows if anybody else in the server has created invites. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward there. And then the final tab is if you've banned anybody, it'll be here and you can remove bans um, or you can just be able to keep track of who's banned. So if they try to join another server, that maybe you moderate or that you're friends with someone, you may want to tell them, hey, you know, I had to ban this person from my server for this reason, keep an eye on them or what have you. And that's it. Like I said, I am I promise to keep it shorter than the last video. So less than 40 minutes is always good. And if you guys found this video helpful and appreciate it, please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell icon. Like I mentioned, next week, we're gonna be going over some more advanced Discord server things like bots, and a more look at the roles and how you can utilize roles to really control certain areas of your discord and if you guys have any suggestions or questions please leave them in the comment section below or you can go ahead and join our discord um you know lots of people in there and i do put a lot of effort into the structure of the discord it is overwhelming and a little over designed for how many people are in there but i do appreciate anybody that's in there and if you have any suggestions for my discord you can feel free to let me know there. <clears throat> and as always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. You can come check me out. Say hello. If you have any questions, I can answer them there as well. And 
that's it for today. See you guys next Friday.